everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well and that you guys are safe during this time. I am making a video on Lou Gehrig's disease today. It was highly recommended on a lot of comments that you guys leave about differentiating all of the neurodegenerative diseases. So I thought today we can go over something new. So Lou Gehrig's disease has multiple names and one of the other names that it's commonly known for is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and that is abbreviated to ALS. Let's break down what amyotrophic lateral sclerosis means. I always find breaking it down from that Latin or Greek language point helps me to remember. So if you go back to medical terminology, a means without or none, right? So when we think myo, we know that it refers to the muscle. And then trophic, think of something like atrophy. That means there's no muscle nourishment. So that means all combined, amyotrophic means there is no muscle being nourished. So that leads to muscle decay. Lateral refers to the person's spinal cord. So we're looking at the nerve cells that are signaling to our muscles and to our the rest of our body, hey, I want to control these movements. So that's why the term lateral is in there and because we're referring to our nerves ability to send signals to our voluntary muscles to coordinate movement. And sclerosis means hardening or scarring. So that means that those muscles that we aren't able to voluntarily control are eventually going to degenerate. So ALS is a neurodegenerative disease and also known as motor neuron disease. So what's happening with this condition is that there is a death of neurons that control our voluntary muscles. So it impacts our entire body, including our brain, spinal cord, and our peripheral system. I'm going to jump around a little bit just because I feel like this is relevant here. There is no known cause for this and there is no cure. So when we think about our perspective of what therapy and treatment is going to look like for OT, you already kind of have an idea just based on hearing that. The symptoms of ALS include muscle weakness and stiffness at first, and typically the symptoms start distally in localized areas, and then it goes closer to the middle of our body or proximally. So you might start to feel weakness and stiffness like in our hands or um, in our feet before we feel it in our trunk and you know our, our abdominal area. So Basically what happens is this leads to progressive weakening and eventual paralysis. Before I go into the general stages of ALS, I'm going to jump into the types. So on the right, there are two types of ALS. There is sporadic, which sounds exactly like what it is, that it's pretty random. So 90% of cases are sporadic. ALS, while the other 5 to 10% is familial. And familial, as it sounds, means that the cases are inherited, so that if you have it, then it's likely that there's a 50% chance that your child will, will inherit that gene mutation as well. The population that ALS impacts is the age group between 40 to 70. Uh, the cause, again, is unknown. There is some interesting research about military veterans having two times the chance to develop ALS as well. And the prognosis for ALS is really hard. It's half the people with ALS will live for about three years, and then 20% live for about five years, and 10% live for about 10 years. So because there's no cure, this is really challenging and a lot of it is about adapting to the circumstances. There are some medications that may help, but I believe there's only four that exist for ALS at this time. So now that we covered that, I'm going to jump back to the left to general stages of ALS. So I apologize I'm jumping around. I should have thought this out a little better when I was writing it, but it looks nice. <laughs> So the general stages of ALS break down into three categories. The early stage sounds exactly like it is. You're going to experience some fatiguing, some very specific weakness. So it's localized to a certain area. 
which means that not all ADL will be impacted. Only daily living skills that are specific to that localized weakness are going to be impacted. So if you have weakness in your fingertips, then maybe something like toothbrushing might become a challenge. But if you have weakness in your legs, then it might be something else, you know, specific to that task. Like, like putting on a pair of pants might be inhibited since you have to balance on your feet. The second stage is called the disability stage, and this is when we're no longer at just localized weakness, but the trunk and the extremities are impacted. This is when a caregiver becomes very important since more of our ADL are going to be impacted at this point in time. The disability stage is also when people will give up their driving because they are more impacted and it's no longer safe to drive. The end stage is when you have muscle paralysis. So you are nearly dependent on your caregiver for everything. There is very little mobility outside of being in a wheelchair or in bed rest. So based on this, our OT focus can be on a lot of different things, but I try to summarize it as best as I could. And I feel like you guys are probably thinking, wow, there are a lot of different things that we would want to address with ALS. So for um, ALS, something that's really important is, of course, strengthening those muscles and building up endurance so that uh, the person will be able to continue without pain or without stiffness as much as possible. So um, active range of motion and passive range of motion as tolerated would be great. But of course, we don't want to overdo it. We also want to help the patient adapt to their life routines and circumstances. I think there's a lot more of caregiver training as well as patient education. We're educating them on adaptive equipment. Think about all the things that could need adjustment in the home, such as having um, our bathtub safe. So we might want a three-in-one commode or, you know, adjustments to the toilet. There might be areas where it needs to become more wheelchair accessible down the line and other little tools and strategies that are going to help with energy conservation as well as our daily living skills. Augmentive communication is also something that we might be able to help with, which I think is really neat since there's so much more technology available now. And as I work through this list, if you guys have time or you just want to look into it, there is a movie called The Theory of Everything. And it is a movie about Stephen Hawking, who was a famous physicist. And if you watch that movie, it really gives you a clear breakdown on some of the things we're talking about because Stephen Hawking, as many of you guys know, had ALS. And he got diagnosed at a fairly young age, but ended up living for a very long time. So it was really cool to see kind of the stages and how he was able to get married and have kids. So um, that would be a neat one to look at to see what kind of equipment and kind of what the stages of life look like for him. As we touched upon before, we want to adapt daily routines to make it easier. And mealtime is going to look different because our mouth and chewing and swallowing are all muscles as well that will get impacted. So you might need softer foods. You might need to thicken the food and um, change the consistency to help with mealtime. Some other things that are important to consider are avoiding subluxation, and you can do this by properly positioning the shoulder. So if you have a wheelchair, then you can look at making sure that the armrest is sufficient in supporting your shoulder and the joints surrounding it, as well as maybe a shoulder sling to keep your shoulder from subluxing. We also want to consider how fine motor tasks will be impacted. So splinting can really come in handy, especially if uh, an individual's hand is curled up or the wrist is dropping. A C-splint or a thumb spica splint is really going to help open that web space between the thumb and our index finger so that we can functionally grasp things. And then if we do have wrist drop, then a wrist cock up will help support that wrist and extend it as well. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope that this is helpful information for any of you who are reviewing ALS. Take care, and I'll see you next time.